most of successful CEO mm -hmm. were extroverted. Mm. I guess that's understandable because you're constantly dealing with people. This is the Ellie and Lee show. show. Right, so now we're moving on to extroversion. Extroversion. Yeah. So in the book, it says the word extroversion is talking about not only extrovert people, but mm -hmm. the wide concept. Yeah. So I think like first when we look at extroversion, we kind of just see it as, you know, those that, that gain energy from being with people and then introverted people being those that gain energy from, you know, spending alone time. But it's partly true. Yeah, it's partly true, but it's not exactly the case. This goes into more detail about it. So I think the thing that kind of stuck out to me is mm -hmm. that it's more of a case of extroversion being yeah. positive emotions mm -hmm. or positive stimulus. So those that are more extroverted seek mm -hmm. those positive mm -hmm. stimulus. Mm. Yeah. I think that goes more with neuroticism, but it's fine. No, not exactly. Because, so from what I was reading, neuroticism mm -hmm. yeah. is more about negative emotions. Mm -hmm. But then the opposite of being less neurotic. Mm -hmm. So if you're low on the neuroticism score, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you have positive emotions. It, ah. it just means that you have less negative emotions. Ah. So then oh, the same with, for... yeah, the same with extroversion. It doesn't uh -huh. mean that uh -huh. if you less extroverted, then you have negative ah. emotions. It just means that you have less positive emotions. Ah, thanks for pointing out. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So introverted people aren't necessarily... Um, positive, you're saying? Not positive, but they're not as receptive to those mm -hmm. positive emotions. So like... Yeah, let's give an example mm -hmm. of maybe yeah. getting an increase in your salary. Mm -hmm. So the extroverted person might see that as a really positive thing and they'll be quite ah. happy about it. But an introverted person would just be like, oh, okay, that's good. I got a raise. There wouldn't be like a very big reaction to it. Mm. Yeah, so I think if you like... So, mm -hmm. so for them, those yeah. kind of challenges or reward mm -hmm. don't really stand out for them. Yeah, exactly. So like if you have someone that's low in neuroticism and mm -hmm. then also kind of introverted, you would mm -hmm. see that Ew. person as you would see that person as being very stable. Mm -hmm. ah. But then if someone's high in neuroticism so and high in extroversion, mm -hmm. then you'd feel like, oh, OK, maybe they're a bit they're like their emotions go up and down. Yeah, it's very extreme, like their emotions. Bipolar? Yeah, bipolar. Mm. So you are saying extrovert people aren't also stable as but, emotionally. Well, the thing is, if you if you consider stability to be m more in the sense of having control over your emotions, mm. but then you know, then that ends up talking about more than one factor or more than one trait. Because I think if you were like completely stable with the emotions, then it would mm -hmm. be that you may be low in neuroticism, maybe mm -hmm. kind of introverted, and also higher in conscientiousness. Mm, okay, yeah. interesting. And also in the book, they talked about addiction, right? Mm -hmm. And what people usually confuse is that there is a terminology, dopaminergic person. Yeah. So dopamine relates to the reward system in the brain. Yeah. So those people who like to challenge themselves yeah. seem to have high reward system in their brain. Yeah, I think they're more reactive or mm. responds quicker to any kind of dopamine. So it can be confused with addiction problem. So yeah, it's possible. some people might say, oh, then all extrovert people is possible to be addictor. Well, I would say if you're looking at something when it comes to traits and things like that, those are generalizations about a personality. Mm -hmm. You can't say for a very specific person that, oh, okay, because you are high in extroversion, therefore you're going to be someone that's addicted. 
And then also, it's not the only factor. Yeah, in the book, it、mm. talked about conscientiousness. Yeah, so like if you low in conscientiousness and you high in extroversion, then I、mm. think there's more of a risk that you'd end up being、mm. uh, addicted to something. Yeah.、Mm. Okay. So it's about looking at like where you lie.、Mm-hmm. And then if you're mindful of it, obviously that's、mm-hmm. kind of having conscientiousness. If you're mindful of it, then you can you know, stay away from. Getting addicted to things. But like it's also like maybe those that are extroverted, when they when they do well at something, then they want to keep doing well at it, you know, because、mm. you want to、okay. keep those positive、uh, benefits, that dopamine flowing.、Mm. Okay.、Mm. And it was interesting for me that being reserved doesn't have to do anything with being introvert. Yeah. It's that's more, true. Yeah. It's more to do with neuroticism. Mm, yeah, I think that's probably a misconception that people have. Like, if you're introverted,、mm. then you're shy. But、mm. it might not be the case because, like, I think、mm. with you,、mm-hmm. you're kind of introverted,、yeah. not, not high. But at the same time, like, day to day, you don't have an issue chatting to, like, the store clerk or something if you need to find out, oh, where is this item or that sort of thing. Yeah, no issues at all. Yeah. But it's more like in the social situations.、Mm, but yeah, I also, I guess because I'm a bit of both, like、mm-hmm. I, I fit kind of in the middle.、Mm-hmm. Um, then for me, it's there's certain social situations, like I, I don't really mind public speaking and stuff like that, or even debating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then I think there's a point where I don't actively seek it all the time. I think that's maybe the difference. Okay. Yeah. So usually, In、mm-hmm. my opinion, being reserved in some situation, like social、yeah. situation, causes from the fear of not getting accepted by people. Yeah, and that's where you can see the neuroticism comes in.、Mm. It's more about negativity, yeah, negative yeah. feelings, not about less positivity.、Mm. So, yeah, in this case, it fits well of the hypothesis in the book. Yeah, that's true. So, on Jordan Peterson's site,、mm-hmm. site named understandingmyself.com, which is the big five trait test、mm-hmm. by Jordan Peterson and colleagues. And colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> If you're enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe. So, they divide one personality as two factors.、Mm. What do they have? So, yeah, in his、uh, test, they break it into two different categories. The first、mm-hmm. one being enthusiasm, and、mm-hmm. the next one being assertiveness.、Mm. Yeah. So, enthusiasm, maybe that goes with that reward system. Yeah, that could that be. That high reactive reward system in their brain.、Mm, and how you assertiveness?、Respond. Assertiveness? Assertiveness is like in a discussion. If you have a point that you think is true,、mm-hmm. then you would, you would try and explain it and then you would try and put your point across, even if there's some negative,、uh, negative responses to it. So maybe they can do it because they have positive emotions. Yeah, that's possible. So, for example,、mm-hmm. in my assumption, so they tend to think that the result is going to be fine and positive. Mm-hmm. So that's why they can put energy to make others change. Because、mm. I'm not, I don't think I am assertive. And it's mostly because I am not that positive. And if I think I need to assert someone, then I would be like pretty exhausted before I even start to make them listen what I'm saying. Because I wouldn't think the result would be positive. So,、yeah. there the motivation is different. But it's, it's not only that, it's also your、mm-hmm. high in agreeableness. So, you、uh, do things、yeah. in a way that you don't want to cause. Not yet there, hey. Yeah. Yeah. But, But then. Maybe. So, I just quickly checked up the definition for assertiveness. But it's、mm-hmm. the quality of being self assured and confident without being aggressive.、Mm-hmm. Without being aggressive. Oh, okay.、Mm-hmm. Oh. So remember, it's not, it's not talking about disagreeableness because that's kind of where you get more aggression.、Uh, okay. Yeah.、Uh, yeah, it sounds like positive. <laughs> yeah.、Mm. 
and then enthusiasm is the intense enjoyment or or interest mm -hmm. mm. i think the one thing i kind of found interesting in the book was mm -hmm. the case of the woman that he was discussing mm -hmm. um because what did she do well she traveled a lot and then he was also mentioning that he, she, she had many uh romantic encounters and things like that but also yeah, even she has a husband yeah she was also married but she still ended up like cheating on her husband so mm, i think that would also be something to kind of be concerned about because if you're too sociable and maybe also agreeable then you can kind of get yourself in that situation where you know you're craving those positive emotions and then mm -hmm. you're not against what someone might put forward yeah so i think also someone that's maybe high in extroversion and high in agreeableness there might also be those that kind of go along with the group and you know mm -hmm. if there's like a dare game or something they might end up you know going ahead and doing those sort of things dare game dare like i dare you to jump jump in the water really yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know maybe mm. maybe that can be someone in the earth <laughs> There would be someone, like one person at least. To jump in the <laughs> water. I don't know. There's many people. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I think like it, it, a lot of it, that's why I find it interesting is a lot of it comes down to what kind of mix of personality you are. Because mm. mm. that's what I'm saying. It'll be interesting to do experiments where you look at certain actions Mm -hmm. and kind of work your way back to find out what kind of personalities would create these actions. So, you know, maybe mm -hmm. people that are more affected by uh, mm -hmm. social pressure or, mm -hmm. you know, peer pressure. Okay, so let's let's guess. So, yeah, for me, I think it would be someone that's agreeable, mm -hmm. maybe extroverted because they'd have to be in those social situations, and mm -hmm. then also neurotic. Neurotic? Because if someone else is telling you to maybe do mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. then because you don't want that n negative social, like you don't want your friends to be like, oh, you're not that fun to be with or something like uh, that. Mm -hmm. So you'd want to go with what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Who would mm -hmm. be most likely to be affected by social or peer pressure? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I think more introverted people. Mm-hmm. Mm, neurotic. <laughs> mm. I'm not talking about me. I'm just yeah, generalizing. Mm, and agreeable. Yeah. I said introverted because um, I don't know. Those kind of society wouldn't be nice to people who are introverted. Why? Peer pressure. But then, how do you get affected by peer pressure if you're not part of the group? I'm introverted. I still get affected by peer pressure. Yeah, but that might be because of other <laughs> factors of agreeableness and neuroticism. Yeah, but... I'm saying that, like, if you're putting yourself in in social mm -hmm. situations, mm -hmm. that means you would be more extroverted. But if you're introverted, you might still have the same tendency, but because mm -hmm. you're not putting yourself in those social situations, it might be to a lesser degree. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But they can think... Because, as the book said... Mm -hmm. Extrovert people tend to be positive, mm -hmm. and introverted less positive. Oh yeah, yeah, less positive. Yeah. Mm. So that's why I thought they maybe get affected by. Peer no, pressure. but then the thing is, if you're less positive, it just means that your friends may be telling you, "Oh, it's going to be a great thing to do this or that, do that." Mm -hmm. They just be like, mm, "I don't really find the benefit." <laughs> mm. Yeah. Because remember, like from reading the Jordan Peterson thing. Um, mm -hmm. it broke it up into enthusiasm. So maybe if you're more introverted, then you're not outwardly enthusiastic. But like towards that peer pressure, maybe mm -hmm. extroverted people might have some... The assertiveness factor. Reward. They want to maybe reward themselves by mm, weaning the peer pressure or... But that's only if they have it in mind. Because also if you're with friends... Mm -hmm. and you want things to be more fun and enjoyable, then you'd kind of also go with it. But we can talk back and forth about it, because obviously we're not 
uh, psychologists, so we don't know exactly, and we haven't conducted yeah. any studies. It's just we are randomly guessing. Yeah, it's just our theory. <laughs> mm. So then, what do you think the personality of someone that's rich might be? Rich, disagreeable, mm -hmm. extroverted. Mm -hmm. I heard, I read a book, and then there was a thing that most of successful CEO mm -hmm. were extroverted. Mm. Uh, I guess that's understandable because you're constantly dealing with people. Mm -mm. It's CEO, so what do you expect? Yeah, they yeah. cannot be. They should be positive to deal with things. Enthusiastic. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because oh yeah, yeah, the enthusiasm comes into play because they need to be driven by positive mm. factors in the world. Mm. So that might be CEO would be extroverted, less neurotic, mm. disagreeable. A bit of openness, mm, high conscientiousness. Mm, yeah, that, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Mm. Please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching. See, See you. you.